Hello and welcome to another Modern Toy Fair review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Super 7 Ultimate Mutagen Ooze Glow Donatello. As always, make sure to stick around to the end of the video to see all the photos I took of this figure and let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and feelings are if you've picked this up or if you're still on the fence. But that's enough chair chatter, let's go ahead and get at her. Alright, so the burning question before we get into how it turned out is, how well does he glow? So let's turn all the lights out, and as you can see, not very well. Um, I did keep him, this is after just a few hours of being under some lights, so maybe it's not charged fully. Uh, here he is, though, with like a black light, so you can see he looks really cool that way, uh, which is, you know, not bad. I really kind of like how that turns out with that. Let's get the lights back on, and we'll go back at it. So this is 100% reuse of the original figure, so you've got all that great sculpt work in the face, you've got the lines in the mask and in the scowl, got the little ties to his mask floating in the wind, and then you go down to the rest of the body and like you've got all those great textures in the shell and in the straps with all the nicks and wear and tear, you've got that bright purple against that yellow which really kind of shows it off. All the muscles and stuff in the arms. You've got those bright purple elbow and wrist pads, which are also kind of beat up a little bit. Which the the green, like translucent glow plastic, looks really good with these like purple knee pads and stuff on it. You got the yellow for the toenails and all the same muscles and wrinkles and stuff throughout the legs and feet. There's the bottom of the feet. Flip it around, and you again same sculpt as the original figure, but you do have two different shades of green here for the shell. Got those scratches on there, all those textures, the purple uh, straps, his knee pads. So it's still a solid figure. Quick update though, this is after several hours of charging him up with my lights on high and even a black light. I also had to use my phone because for whatever reason my SLR wouldn't pick it up, but yeah, so he does glow pretty well. Okay, on to articulation. I'll try to make this quick. If you want more in depth, check out my old review. So head does move quite a bit up, not a lot down. Does twist all the way around, and then you get a decent amount of tilt back and forth. Arms can go up to about 90, bicep swivel, do go full the way around 360 degrees of the shoulder. You got the single jointed elbows, which can go decent far. You've got the wrist pegs, which go back and forth, but also pop out real easy, which is kind of annoying. And you see there, and then at the abdomen, you do have these cuts underneath the shell, so you can get a little bit of wiggle, but nothing crazy. So you can get a little kind of hunch movement forward. Uh, legs do go out, go out to 90 both ways. You do have the little thigh swivel there. You've got a swivel at the single jointed knee, just like the elbow. Tons of ankle pivot in every which direction. Um, again, if you want more in depth, I'll link the old review at the end of this one for the original figure, but yeah, it's pretty solid. All right, on to accessories. This is where it gets kind of disappointing. So we do have the old Playmates head all done in the glow in the dark for that bright purple and that bright green. Looks really cool, but again, I don't care about the Playmates figures, so if you're a fan of the channel, you already know that. Then you do get a pair of closed fists, a pair of gripping hands that have the hinge go the opposite direction, and then a pair of open hands. You do have the little turtle communicator, which I feel like needed some dark green paint on there to kind of offset all of the green, so just being casted in a solid color. You do get a little bit of paint apps here on the open version. Again, just you need a little bit more. Like it shouldn't just be a solid color. Uh, the pizza, you can barely tell any of the details because of this, but I, I, like, I don't know. There's so many things that could have done different with that. This is the most disappointing. That's the ooze canister. Literally could have painted the end silver and made it so like it's glowing through it and then had the ooze there, it's broken, glowing, but instead they just added a little bit of yellow there and that's it. So I'm really sad about this one because it had a lot of potential. You do have his bow staff, which has that beautiful bright purple wrap on it, which really pops against the green. And you got the green on the ends. You also have little green baby turtle, which I feel like the shell could have been painted just to kind of offset it a little bit. Okay, quick size comparison. So here we have him with my custom rebirth Muffex Batman, who's a little bit taller. There's the symbiote Spidey, who's about the same height, maybe even a little bit shorter. So I like the way those scales with him. 
Then we have the Marble Legends John Favreau, which is a little bit taller, and then Pimp Daddy Destro from the Classified line, who's a little bit taller than that. And then, of course, the big beefy boy, Marvel Legends build a figure Armadillo, who's massive. And last up, we have the box, which they killed it. I feel like most of the funding went here. Look at this. It looks like the little ooze canister. You got some ooze dripping from the manhole cover. It's a little translucent, so you can see through to the like details. The green at the bottom. Top has the Ultimates logo. Side has that TCRI logo. Other side, again, back has Turtles logo. Take the slip cover off, and you have ooze just everywhere. I mean, look at the like the cutouts for it, for the plastic, the logo there, more cutouts, all the ooze textures everywhere. More on this side as well. Like, this is really cool. Like, I'm sad that they spent so much time on this box, but then the accessories were just so <laughs> lackluster. But, yeah, there's the you know, logos and the barcode and stuff. And the back has a little bit about him with that giant hazard logo. And ooze just kind of everywhere. And, yeah, I, I'm not going to lie. This box is really, really cool. Like, I'm impressed. Okay, so overall, I am a little conflicted. Um, first and foremost, I didn't buy the full set of these figures from Super 7 because I didn't want to spend $200 plus on all four turtles when I only wanted Donatello because I'm trying to keep my collection for turtles to Donatello, you know, focused with some exceptions of the comic book lines. Um, so I did get this from Big Bad Toy Store for 70 which still I feel was too much. Obviously, Super 7, you know, had it marked as a certain thing and Big Bad Toy Store was nice enough to split them up when they ordered them and they probably didn't get a huge hefty disc so they had to you know, find some profit there to make it worthwhile since this was Super 7 exclusive. But, um, oh, and it was significantly cheaper than eBay. eBay, like people were asking like 130 bucks for it. So I was like, no, thank you. But like a lot of Super 7 things nowadays, I feel like it just isn't worth the money uh, for multiple reasons. I mean, as I mentioned with some of the accessories, like paint apps and stuff really could have like elevated them to the next level. It just felt like some of the stuff was a little lazy. It felt like we got less than we did with the original release of this figure when it was only $45 so I don't know I, I I like it it's Donatello it glows in the dark I'm a huge fan of glow in the dark stuff but uh, it, if I wasn't crazy like I am I probably wouldn't do it again but let me know in the comments below your thoughts and feelings were you on the fence that this sway you one way or another you do you just not give a shit about Super 7 at this point, um, or are you all in? Uh, let me know down below, and as always, make sure to stick around here to the end of the video to see the photos that I took of this figure, and check us out over on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Also, before I let you go, we do have a Patreon now, so if you'd like to support us further, you can go to patreon.com forward slash modern toy fair, where we have several tiers to choose from. You can do anything from make suggestions, get early access to the podcast, and even be able to to join us on a live stream or get physical prints of the photos I take. So again, that's patreon.com forward slash modern toy fair. Link will be in the description below or should be uh, up here on your screen currently. But that's gonna be it for this week's video. Hopefully see you next week. Same toy time, same toy fair channel. Thank you for watching.